plug you in today to our uh, PBA and Noon webinars. Uh, with us today is a very interesting story. It's called uh, Globex Data. They are a Swiss secure cloud storage company. Uh, they can secure your emails. Uh, they have military grade encryption security. So uh, it's a very good story, especially in this time when everybody at home and there's a lot of hackers out there going after people trying to get information out of them. With us today is uh, Alain Guillet and uh, he will start the presentation uh, now, Alain. Thank you, Paul. Hi everyone, thanks for attending the presentation. I'm going to go back to my disclaimer screen. Um, uh, this is a classic disclaimer as a public company that, um, you know, there is risk involved in investing and anything can change and whatever I say could be true today, but not tomorrow and not in the past. Uh, it's basically legal stuff that we need to show you. I'm sure you can all read it when you get the presentation. So Globex Data is a company that um, is incorporated. Uh, it was a company that started in Switzerland over 10 years ago. Uh, spend quite a lot of money developing our technology. I'm the CEO and founder. I'm Swiss at, uh, myself. And uh, in 2019, Globex Data went public on the CSE uh, as a pure IPO. Uh, we did not do a, a reverse merger or a CPC. This was an IPO from scratch. And uh, by the end of last year, we were listed on the OTCQB. We're basically the leader in Swiss hosted secure data management and communication. Um, and in, it translates to essentially what we do is we provide uh, applications and services such as similar to WhatsApp or Dropbox or Gmail to help businesses run their business and have secure communication from email to chat, file share, and then also data storage, disaster recovery, collaboration suite, and so forth. Uh, we have um, all our services are in use. Uh, we are generating revenues already. And um, what the different, uh, one of the particularities that we do is all the data that uh, that is stored in our servers is stored in Switzerland only. So we have three main products and a fourth one. So I'm going to go with private talk first. Um, so again, we combine proprietary technology that we have developed, which, I, which doesn't use open source, uh, which means that uh, I would say virtually unhackable because nobody knows the code. Contrary to all the services out there, they use open source coding because, um, and when you use open source coding, you have to publish your secret formula. So it defeats the purpose of securing your information. Uh, but it does permit a lot of people to create many products out there. So private talk is a secure communication suite. So imagine a combination between a WhatsApp and a Skype. This is exactly what we do. Uh, we offer two versions of it, a private talk messenger, which has a chat, a messaging application, and an email. The messaging application has self-destruct timers. So if you send a message to someone and you want it self-destruct, within half hour or however you want, it'll delete from your device and the recipient device and our servers in Switzerland. The other thing that's really critical that we do and nobody else does is when you download an application, I'm sure you all have tried downloading application, uh, they always ask for your phone number. Um, when you give your phone number away, essentially you give away your device address and that's not good. We never ask for the phone number and there's many advantages technically uh, to do that in terms of security and privacy. I won't get into it in this conversation, uh, but basically we're the only ones that do that. What it means is we care more about protecting your data than mining your data. There's a big difference between us and I will say everybody else is that we make money from our fees that we charge a user on a monthly or yearly basis, and we do not look at your data and we don't sell it and uh, and that's important. Everybody else pretty much does from Facebook, which has WhatsApp, all the way to Apple, Amazon, uh, Google, Microsoft, they all data mine your information. And this is why you have all these hacks of hundreds of millions of people being hacked because that information is all over now. Custodia is our email platform. Uh, we just had a press release today that we're launching a new feature in it. Um, it's um, 
proprietary technology. Digital safe is basically what it is. It's, it's a safe for all your data. So it's a combo, it's like a Dropbox, a password manager, comes with an email account as well, secure file share and collaboration tools. This is typically used by most businesses. And secure is a, a combo of all our services rolled into one. Typically, you will have C-level executives, governments, or high net worth individuals using this. This is a service that we will launch more aggressively in probably the second half of this year. Uh, a typical user would be a company that already has an IT, but doesn't want internal leakage of their information. I think what I should tell you is that 62% of all corporate leaks come from within the company, typically the IT department that has access to all the emails that go back and forth between all the executives inside and outside of the company. So secure is a way to have a separate parallel system for highly confidential information to be stored or to be communicated. Um, I'm just going to go really quickly on these screens. That's how Private Talk looks. All our services come with a web base and a phone application for both Android and iOS and a mobile application. Um, I should mention that our email is, um, is um, unique because we have a few features that nobody else does have. One of them is you can send an email to an outsider, let's say a, a, a bank or a lawyer or you know, a fund or a government entity uses our custodia platform and they will basically send an email to somebody that has Gmail. Well, what happens is when you have an encrypted email, when that email leaves your server to go, just like a letter that you're gonna send, when it leaves your home, it's no longer secure. This is the same with email. So we have a way to do what we call secure send. So you can send an email to anybody in the world without the recipient ISP or hosting like Google, or Microsoft or anybody else, Rogers or what have you read the email and the content because that's what's happening. This is why 85% of all fraud uh, comes from emails, from people hacking email and reading them and knowing that you have a bank account at this bank and that you did this and you did that. I'm sure you've done some experiment. If you use Gmail, you talk about something, you surf something, suddenly you see a bunch of ads popping up related to your content that you typed. We prevent that, uh, and that way nobody can read the content of the email except the sender and the receiver. And the receiver can send it back in the same secure send method. This is a new feature that we're going to have uh, next month. We had a press release about it today. Secure is pretty much what I told you. It's for high net worth individuals. It rolls everything into one. Typically, it's a service that we would charge $500 a year uh, per user. That's US dollars as opposed to maybe, you know, if we wholesale something like digital safe, it may be like $200 a year. And maybe the email might be about $100 a year. And the uh, email and chat, the private talk messenger, might be about $150 a year. So why Switzerland? I'll be really quick. I think a lot of you know where Switzerland is. It used to be a secrecy center for financial world. It no longer is that uh, since 2018 but in terms of the data not the banking secrecy laws but the privacy laws have been implemented in the constitution and we've been having that for probably more than a couple hundred years and that has not changed so switzerland is a very stable country energy independent politically stable one of the top economies and most efficient in the world most importantly the best data privacy laws in the world so that's good to have your data there. Um, the other thing is, in terms of cyber attack and cyber theft, well, until now it was just enough to do a cool application, easy to use, but there was no security behind it. There is still no security behind everything. They just put the bare minimum. Um, so the problem is to try to get a highly encrypted and complex system while the user has a very easy user experience. We have been able to achieve that. We have the solution. Can a data communication application combine convenience and uh, cyber security and internet privacy? We have been able to achieve that. By the way, 
uh, cyber attack and theft of data are identified as uh, two of the top 10 business risks in the world. Uh, this is from the World Economic Forum, I believe. Um, I'm not going to read these statistics. We'll, you'll get this presentation. But roughly 41% of companies have over a thousand sensitive files, including credit card number and all sorts of records. Most of them are unprotected. And uh, starting next year, the, basically the damage related to cyber crime in the world is projected to cost the global economy six trillion dollar. So it's important to know the um, in perspective. It's true that COVID has cost trillions. This is hopefully a once in a 50 year event. But think about every year, six to seven trillion US dollars being caused in damages just from cybersecurity. It's, it's the silent killer, I call it, uh, because there's no, there's very few protection against it. The financial services are among the biggest targeted in the, in the, in the field. And then you have telecommunication and all sorts of other healthcare records now are also being uh, being targeted uh, many times because they hold a lot of key information. So trends in the shift, what we say is what we've seen is there's a trend. You have the big names like Microsoft, Google, and so forth. Uh, they have the biggest platforms out there. They are fully open and fully compromised. There was a report from the FBI a month or so ago that declared that any business that hosts their email with Microsoft Cloud or G Suite from Google is compromised and is costing billions of dollars a year to the US industry uh, for because these are compromised uh, email. That means they can steal money from your bank. They can do all sorts of things and even shut you down in ransomware. The trends now for serious people who are looking at protecting their data and having privacy is to go to smaller players like us that focus purely on security and privacy. And this is where we are on the right. Uh, by the way, there was a, a large uh, data hack a couple, two, three, three months ago from Microsoft. Imagine 44 million people had the same username and password on Microsoft. And in the last 10 years, over 250 million people and records were compromised when you were calling the support sec the section of Microsoft. So, you know, I was talking to Sophie a bit earlier. She told me about some of her cybersecurity experience, unfortunately, in the last couple of weeks. And it's exponentially growing because now with work from home and COVID, we are all using unprotected internet. We're using stuff from home uh, to connect to work. And basically, the damage is exponential. So it's one thing when you have a protected data at home, uh, I mean, at the office, it's another thing to work from remote location where there's even less protection. Our unique proposition, we have quite a few, but generally is we have a proprietary tech called Virtual Vault. We encrypt each user's data independently as opposed to putting everyone in one big database. It's virtually unhackable in that sense. Our Helix technology encrypts in a way that the encryption doesn't happen from the device. Everybody else does from the device. We do it from a central server because encryption is like, um, it, it requires a lot of, of uh, processing power and your phone is not that powerful. But if you have a million dollars of servers in a center, that's a lot more powerful to create very long encryption key. Uh, not to get too technical. We don't use Amazon Web Service, Google or other infrastructure. We have our own. Uh, we're feature rich, we can do on-premise, we can work with governments worldwide to install in their location. We have that flexibility. Um, so we, we're a very flexible type of uh, service and we can make it adaptable to anybody's need. And it's also one single platform for everyone. So I'm gonna skip a little bit on the security because I wanna talk about the financial aspect. Um, and this is our proprietary technology explained in a simplistic manner as best as we can. The industries that we serve, corporates and government that require levels of security and advanced control. Also small medium enterprise and small business that don't have the budget for an IT company, but do have legal requirements such as lawyers, accountants, etc. And then any kind of customer that's looking for a particular level of privacy. 
uh, typically if you target the business world i would say about 25 30 percent of every business user is a potential client for us and price wise we can compete with the big guys as well um, some of our partnership the very first one in latin america called america mobile the third biggest telecom operator in the world with almost 400 million users belongs to Carlos Slim. You may have heard about him. He's one of the richest men in the world and they operate in 26 countries. Having been validated and partnered with them last year is a huge thing for us. Now we're talking to the largest telecom in South Asia as well. Um, and of course, COVID didn't help matters, but we believe that starting September, things are going to roll back again in Latin America. We have an office there with a couple employees developing the relationships and uh, we believe business is going to be quite good. Uh, back in North America, we closed a deal with Keller Williams, the largest real estate uh, agency in the world. And we just finished uh, a deal with Remax and they're going, they came to us and they selected all our application to promote to their 85,000 agents and broker in the US and Canada. And we have about half a dozen uh, resellers worldwide, mostly South Asia, uh, some in Australia. We have a campaign to start uh, after COVID to target about 1,200 resellers in the US and Canada. The revenue distribution, it's really easy. We are a recurring revenue model. So anytime we get a customer from a partner, I should add, uh, because how do we get our clients? We get them from our resellers and partners. That way we don't have the client acquisition cost, which is very high. So we get the customer, we do a revenue share with the partner, and essentially the partner bears the cost of the client acquisition, we just maintain the platform. And for that, we give away between 15 to, for telecom, 50%. But we have very high profit margin, so we're comfortable doing so. So when we get a client, typically they don't leave, because why would you leave when you have a great email system, a password manager, and you put all your data in our store, right? So uh, this is a recurring revenue model, which is great because the profit margin increases every month. Um, the market, by the way, for cybersecurity is about $500 billion US a year. The average revenue, depending on which region in the world we operate, is between $3 to $10 net to us per month per user, except for secure where it's going to be $50 US per month. We operate in North America, Latin America, the South Asian region. We have very little in Europe, uh, and we started to do some stuff in the Middle East, but COVID stopped that. But our biggest centers are Asia, South Asia, which means Sri Lanka, uh, Bangladesh, starting India soon, and all of Latin America. Uh, we see growth, uh, definitely growth. We've signed contracts. We are generating some revenues already. The revenues will accelerate after Q2. Um, new contracts are awaiting announcement as well. We have some very sizable potential contract. We're working with a group uh, that could basically increase tenfold our asset and our and our value. Um, this this is beginning stages, but they want to do a sort of a private web. Uh, we're looking into it anyway, not to get too much detail, but if we do that. That could be an exponential growth already in another sector uh, because the problem is that when you go on the web nothing is private so we have the applications now we're going to build the browsers as well um, we have no debt we have a low burn rate next year our budget is 375,000 canadian and we're targeting profitability before the end of 2021 we have a low share count 55 million shares outstanding very strong pre-ipo shareholder base. Uh, the IPO was done by Mackey in Vancouver. Uh, there was about 5.4 million shares uh, issued uh, at 25 cents with a warrant at 75. We have done a couple of uh, subsequent private placement with Swiss high net worth individuals. We have a private placement going on now to whoever wants to. Uh, we'll explain that later. But management, including myself, own about 33 million shares out of that. And that's not going anywhere. I should add that I also do not take a salary from the company. Um, I'm going to wait until the company is profitable and probably get some dividends out of that. Um, and these are our board of directors. So I think I'm, I'm done and I'm open for 
question, everyone. Um, thank you for listening. Ale, thank you very much. Um, thank you, everyone, for your questions. We do have quite a few. Um, we okay. have one that asks, how do you compare to a VPN? That's a super good question. So we are actually building our own VPN in Q3. A VPN is a way to connect to the net. Uh, typically, 99% of them are unsecure. And when you change a location to hide your real location, uh, it defend, eventually there, there's a flaw because there's a blip where you drop from the VPN connection and then you reconnect. So you could be found. So VPN is a tool to mask your IP address, but it doesn't miss, and it does secure a little bit more your internet connection. We have something much stronger than that because we connect only to the server in a way like a VPN would, uh, but much higher encryption. I get that a lot. Is it like a VPN or not? It's not like a VPN, but it's a great analogy. And we are developing our own VPN with a Swiss IP address with a high encryption. Thank you. Um, another question is, what happens when you send an email to someone with a, G, uh, with a Gmail account? How secure is that communication? OK, so when you use our webmail, so when you have email, you can download you can set up your email on your device. We call it IMAP or whatever you have. When you use our webmail, which is more secure, um, you can send to anybody in the world an email through Secure Send. And essentially, um, I'm going to call the question Bob. So I'm going to send an email to Bob who has Gmail. Bob will receive a notification from his Gmail account saying that Alain sent you an email. Click here to view it. When Bob clicks on the link, then he can see the whole email and essentially it's hosted only in our server because we don't send anything over the wire over the net and even when i send an email i can decide how many times bob can read it before it gets destructed i can put a time limit on it and i can even put a password on it and separately notify bob i sent you an email only you can read it but i still put a password on it because if you have somebody next to you a colleague or something i don't want anybody to be able to open it so with our technology, you can send anywhere in the world. Essentially, the email never leaves our server. And what we're launching next month is that Bob can reply back the same way without having to buy our system. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, we also have another question related to the VPN. They were asking when you expect your VPN to come out. Um, we expect, uh, hopefully, I, I believe by September. The, the thing is we have to... We have to go to Switzerland in some ways. Uh, we have our one of our <laughs> main tech guys actually in Vancouver. Uh, we don't necessarily need to go fully. We can ship the equipment to our people there. But September is definitely when we're going to have that. And the VPN will be part of the secure solution or as an add-on, or we can bundle it, right? So we have that flexibility of having these products. But if, if we don't have a... The VPN essentially will make it that when you go online, um, it looks like you're in Switzerland. But if you don't have a VPN and you use our services, it is still highly secure, probably more secure than a VPN. By the way, some of these open VPN have been hacked, so I would be very careful. Um, we, we have a partnership with one VPN company. That's the only one that have a very high encryption. But when we have our own, then we'll just do our own. Yeah, probably September is long answer to a, to a short question. Sorry about that. No, excellent. And another question we had was, do phone companies provide enough security? No. <laughs> so <laughs> the short, short answer is no. Um, I, I, do, um, I do a lot of interviews. I did a ton on radio and TV and whatnot. The phone companies are bound. First of all, they're not interested in security. In fact, T-Mobile, uh, which is a fantastic company, the CFO is a good friend. Uh, T-Mobile has been hacked like recently. Um, they don't provide security because it's not their business. Uh, and essentially, mm -hmm. to be very honest with you, let's say you're in, in fact, all of the phone numbers in the US have been compromised 50 times over because they recycle them. Uh, this is why we're trying to do something called two-factor authentication, but we want to do it differently because if you're in the US or Canada, it's useless. Your phone number has been recycled. Phone companies don't provide security. That's why they go to companies like us and they'd make little profit margin too. 
phone companies love companies like us because we can give them a 50% profit margin and have security services now, you see? Uh, I got a question for you. So what about sorry, sorry, Sophie. No, go ahead, Paul. Can a small business have multiple users? And could the owner of the small business, does he control everything? Does he see all emails? Uh, yes, or is it that's a great question. So a small business uh, with America Movial, because they're huge, we did like two, three, five, but typically we have a five user account. You have an owner that basically can see everyone you have now we're building into it an it manager uh, this is something a role uh, that we'll have uh, in july for large enterprise and an it manager can onboard your 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 people whether it's two three five or fifty people and yes they can but a regular user it's like a hierarchical model a regular user cannot see anybody else's data or safe or email but the owner and let's say the IT, it's all regulated, but the owner can do anything they want. This is by request, by the way, because a lot of these businesses want to monitor their employee to see if they're leaking information or what have you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Not to mention um, government. I should mention, yeah, if, if you don't mind, a quick, a quick intro here. We are working with quite a few overseas government and defense departments. Uh, our email is of prime, prime interest to them. Sorry, go ahead. No, no problem. Um, another question we had was how many customers do you presently have? Um, we have about uh, 20,000 users. Some of them pay very little. Some of them pay high. We're expecting um, in um, by the end of 2021, uh, depending on what we do with one of the telco, we're expecting probably another 50 to 100,000 users, and those are going to be users that pay us a fixed fee. So it's going to be it's going to be quite uh, quite generous, and we're looking at uh, hopefully beginning of 2021 closing about 10 to 15,000 users. Those are government users overseas, and then you know regular people, yeah. Okay, so okay. I, um, I think we have, I, I have one. actually three more. Um, All right, I yeah. got one oh. and I'm done. Uh, can you use it on multiple devices, am I? Like you're on your phone, on your laptop? Totally, your... totally. It's, uh, it's multiple device and what's the best part is that it synchronizes everything. This is why we don't ask for your phone number. I'll be kind of quick. Uh, if you have WhatsApp, I have a US and a Swiss SIM card on my phone, I have a dual SIM. If somebody WhatsApp me on my Swiss line, it's a different thing. So it's it's synchronized. It's on as many devices as you want. We don't charge per device. And uh, yeah, on any kind of device you can imagine. All right, thank you. Okay, excellent. Why, um, another question all around the phone companies, why wouldn't the phone companies get into business with your services if your services are complementary? And uh, a second point to that question, oh no, go ahead with that, that that's good. Okay, so they, they wanna use our services, I'll tell you why, because number one, it's all about money. Um, so number one is they make a 50% profit margin from a product they don't have to develop or even maintain. So it's basically free money for them. They have the client base, They're, they don't make as much profit margin, and also, there is a huge need in the world now in businesses for security, and they don't have either the knowledge or even the time to develop these services. So they go to a company like ours, and they say, we like your digital safe, we like your privacy thing, we want to have that, and they just plug it in as a value-add service. Um, America Movial, this is a great question. If you don't mind, I'll expand on it. America Movial, ticker AMX in the stock exchange in New York, essentially the, uh, put digital safe as their main security application and it's not part of a package uh, that would be a dream come true but they are imposing sales quota on it which is unheard of for a telco so post covid we will have specific sales quota that their salespeople have to comply with and have to sell um, the and and essentially if you're a client of rogers okay and roger sells you office 365 Ideally, they would also sell our services and say, if you want something more secure, here it is. And Rogers would make like 50% profit. 
So that's why they, they go to us. They, they don't have the knowledge, they don't have the time, uh, they make way more money and they don't have to lift a finger in terms of the technology. Excellent. Okay, and uh, here's another question, a good one. How do we know if we do a banking transaction by a remote location, how secure it is, if we don't know they're using your security services? So here's the thing. I mean, that's a very vague, vague question. So you have so many ways to do it. If you send an email to your banker, I'm going to use that as an example. I had to, I'm a paranoid about privacy and I have stickers everywhere on my phone and I don't like to send my information on WhatsApp. So I sent my passport info at TD when I opened an account. I sent my banker a secure send email. That means that nobody was able to see it except her. So that's a way to do it. This is why this secure send feature is very attractive to banks, by the way. We're talking to several banks overseas because they will use the email communication because the average user doesn't have that and doesn't want to register a whole new account with a password that's going to be cracked. But the banker needs to communicate with the, with the user. So, But as far as transacting on an application, first of all, my, my advice is that if you use a TD app, I, Sorry, I say TD, it could be any bank. Basically, if you use a bank application, don't use your Wi-Fi, do me a favor. Use your 4G, it's way more secure to start um, if you have to use an application. I prefer going on the website if I can. Okay, and by the way, short sure answer, don't assume that they're safe. They use third-party developers all over the developing world and they have no clue what they're doing. So you have to be the guy or the lady that will take, that will really pay attention of how you connect to your bank, sorry. Okay, excellent. Uh, we also have a, a comment saying thank you, excellent presentation. And it was from uh, one of our attendees who actually works for KW. So he said he'll- uh, Oh, super. <laughs> uh, That's great. Yeah, yeah. great. Yeah. Um, all right, that's that's good. I'm glad at least you know it's kind of neat. So anybody that has, uh, I I believe I will be able to get your information. I encourage any kind of questions whatsoever. I'd like to talk about the financial matter if I may, if I have a minute or two. Sophie, what's our time? Go right ahead. Okay. So just just to to let everybody know, in terms of fan, in terms of cash, uh, we have no debt. We have cash in the bank. We're in a decent position. We're going to lower our burn rate dramatically after August because most of the R&D part of it and launches are done. We are working with several uh, projects. Uh, each of them would generate about seven, eight hundred thousand dollars a year. And as you saw, our burn rate next year will be under 400 grand. Uh, that telco in the South Asia, um, that particular one in, in Sri Lanka alone, uh, they have about one and a half million users. They want to start onboarding our application probably by year end. And we believe that within a couple of years, we can get probably 5% or 10% of their business users. So that would be about 100,000 users uh, from them. And we would make in, U in Canadian dollars, I guess, $80 a year per user. So it's a sizable, sizable amount. And no, and just so you know, even if we have 10 million users, our cost doesn't go incrementally that high. The maximum expenses we would have if we have 10 million users, which means we would make like uh, 55, 60 million a year, um, actually no, 500 million a year, if we have 10 million users, it would cost us maybe two, three million dollars. So it's a very high profit margin business because we spend years developing our own tech and, um, and we kept we keep things pretty tight in terms of budget. COVID has affected us by a few months, but uh, we're in terms of liquidity, we're quite fine. Uh, we're welcome any kind of questions post this presentation. Feel free to you know pick up a few shares in the market. If you're interested in our private placement, we are doing a private placement at 12 cents and a warrant at 13, a full warrant for one year. Uh, we have mostly European takers for that anybody in the world is welcome to subscribe to it so that's it and thanks for uh, for these technical questions i can tell a lot of people have personal experience and it's really good to see because people relate to what we do everybody uses an email everybody has had 
a friend or, a, or somebody they know hacked more or less or they have been unfortunately hacked and the more precaution we take the better it is and we are in the perfect perfect business because it will just never slow down i can tell you unfortunately uh, cyber crime is exponentially growing and we're here to you know to hopefully uh, make ourselves available to a lot of people excellent thank you alain thank you well, Alain, if we do have other questions, I'm getting a couple more that have come in on my phone as yeah. we're talking, but they were they were asked by other people. So there is a, there is some interest here. I've got somebody that wants to talk to you, so I'll arrange that with you later. I want to thank okay. everybody who's logged in today. It's very much appreciated. Uh, I know these are trying times when you're stuck at home, but it's good to hear that you can have all your emails, or all your devices, you know, safe and secure with this kind of, uh, uh, you know, information that Alain is giving you. Uh, so again, thanks to everyone, and we'll be back on uh, Tuesday of next week, the 28th. Merci beaucoup, Thank Alain. you, everyone. Uh, de rien, avec plaisir. Thank you, everyone. I look forward to contact each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.